In the previous vlog, China, 144-hour transit visa, I chronicle how we failed to gain access into Beijing. After about half an hour with uh, time spent with Chinese bureaucracy, which led us nowhere, this agent from Air China showed up who spent about an hour with us to arrange a flight, not back to Vancouver, but a flight to Bangkok on the same night. Now, we didn't pick Bangkok by accident. First of all, it was one of the few destinations available. Bangkok is one of Asia's great cities. As a Canadian, you can stay in Thailand for up to 30 days for tourism purposes without a visa on arrival. The downside was that it was a relatively long four-hour flight. You're viewing Travels with Lobo and Barbara, Asia 2020, vlog number three. In this vlog, I'll be talking visas, ATMs, bank and credit cards, SIM cards, Grab, Google Maps, Agoda, Line Messenger, Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, Skype, taxis, Bangkok traffic, earthquakes, and the NASA Vegas Hotel. And oh yes, I'll also be talking electrical outlets. We arrived at Suvarna Bhumi International Airport in Bangkok well after midnight. As I walked past this point and scanned the list of uh, 20 or so countries that I can get a visa on arrival, I panicked when Canada was not there. But then I remembered Canada does not need a visa on arrival, as do some other countries as well, of course. Please check carefully what the visa requirements are for your country. The form asks you whether you had a hotel accommodation, which we did not. So one more time, the MacBook that I brought along came to our rescue. Suvarna Bhumi does have internet access throughout the airport. In theory, you also need a ticket that shows you're leaving Thailand within 30 days. Thank God they did not ask for that. Here's a quick checklist before you leave the airport. Hopefully you'll not be arriving uh, at 1 in the morning and you'll have time to do all the things I'm about to mention. Head for the nearest ATM and get yourself some bats, Thai bats. That's the currency. There are th about 32 bats to the one US dollar. I would recommend that you travel with two bank cards and two credit cards, which I keep tucked away along with my passport in a money belt uh, worn on my underwear. The next step is very important. Right at the airport, get yourself a SIM card for your smartphone so you have all the information you need about public transportation and whatever else on your cell phone. Download the app Grab, yes, G-R-A-B, Grab, which will allow you to get a taxi or a tuk-tuk in some places. Of course, it goes without saying that you have to have the app Google Maps. Very, very helpful in your travels. You'll also download an app like Agoda, which will allow you to find a hotel room easily. I don't like Booking.com because it does not allow you to take a screenshot. That's essential. Might also be useful to download Line. Yes, Line, L-I-N-E. That's the big uh, messenger app in Thailand. As far as your ability to call back home is concerned, of course, you've got uh, Facebook Messenger and you've got, uh, you've got WhatsApp. Great means to call anywhere. And, of course, there's Skype. This, of course, only works if you have a Thai SIM card or you are in a Wi-Fi zone, which is available, too, in some areas. By the time we got out of the airport, it was about 2 o'clock in the morning, and the only means of transportation available was a taxi. It cost about $25 and took about 20 minutes. We're uh, staying at the uh, NASA Vegas Hotel. Massive hotel. Architecturally challenged to the nth degree. The only windows, as I might have mentioned inside, are windows in the bathroom. The huge building that was swaying this morning as we experienced an earthquake. Thank God it doesn't seem to have gotten any worse. <laughs> That's about the only good thing I can say about this hotel in terms of location, that you're right by the railway line that goes to the airport. Other than that, it's very inconvenient uh, to go downtown or anywhere else. Massive uh, lobby uh, of the hotel. But if you just want to hang around, there are only these seats over here. Now, the price was uh, right. I think we paid about 30 to $40 here, uh, including breakfast. You get fried rice and vegetables, 
Chinese cabbage, chicken sausage, scrambled eggs, and so on. 17th floor, Nasa Vega Hotel in Bangkok, classified as a luxury hotel. Uh, and uh, they describe this as a luxury room, Barbara? Luxurious room. Oh, luxurious room, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It has absolutely no furniture to speak of. Well, one just, table. Just this luggage holder and uh, one, table. one table. That's it. And a, and a nothing stool. Nothing a else. That's all you can sit yeah, on. Nothing else. One of the uh, cheapest ways to uh, get around Bangkok is with these motorcycle taxis. I uh, don't know of too many tourists that would use these, but the locals certainly do. All over the place. The bus system. Confusing as hell for a foreigner. So there's your typical Bangkok traffic. Basically unusable till about 11 o'clock, according to a taxi driver. I said the system was confusing, but we did not get a SIM card at the airport. That would have helped us. We certainly did in later countries. Here's a look at an electrical outlet in Thailand. I was very much concerned about whether the North American three-pronged plug could be used here, but as you can see, yes, it fits in there, two-pronged as well. It'd be a good idea to bring a power bar, which has some USB ports, because we tend to have a lot of electrical devices that need charging one way or the other. I was shooting all my video with my smartphone, so a power bank was absolutely essential by the end of the day. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and maybe a comment would be appreciated. Hit the subscribe button and the alert button and you won't miss a single episode to be published every Friday. Thank you very much.